At the time that Mr. West, for the first time after about eight years, struggled with the rent, you understand that the entire country was going through the COVID crisis, and there was an eviction moratorium in place. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes, but this was after but expired. This, you're saying this was after the eviction moratorium expired, when he was first late with the rent? Mm-hmm, or I believe it was. Okay, well, that's not what you told him. You told him the eviction moratorium did not apply to single-family residences, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, and that was wrong. It did apply. Mm, not that I know of. But this guy, from what we can tell, in 10 years, was late and struggled a lot on a single month's rent, then caught up, then you raised the rent on him while he was struggling. You guys got lucky, because what you could have had was a guy that said, eviction moratorium, I'm not paying my rent, and there would have been nothing you could have done for years. And look, the fact that there was an eviction moratorium, of course, doesn't excuse people that are renting from paying the rent. It wasn't a rent moratorium, but you were able to recoup all of your rent for that period except the very last month, which put you in a far better position than most landlords would have been during that time. Do you acknowledge that? Sure. Okay. I have one more question. One of the things that you claimed in your complaint was that you had to remove marijuana plants growing in the backyard. Where were those plants on the videos that they Mr. They were in pots. They had been removed. They had already been removed. They were in pots. Well, if they had already been removed, then you didn't remove them. No, he did. He removed them. <laughs> okay, so when you wrote in your complaint, we removed them. Oh, well, I, yeah, I meant he did. It's the same thing. They, they had to be removed. So no skin off your back because he came and got them. Right. All we wanted was for him to I, move out. We're good. We're good. I think we have what we need. I, I kind of like Judge Juarez's reflection on your lack of recognition. But we will uh, look at these issues clearly and come to a conclusion. Could I add? You're both uh -uh. excused. We're we good. thank you. You can step out while we deliberate in this matter. This courtroom is now in recess. I couldn't contain myself. I had to express how I thought that you hit the nail right on the head from the very outset, Judge Juarez. You know, the plaintiffs as landlords, they gave away ice in the winter to a, a fellow that uh, really fell on hard times and a difficult time for so many of us. That's not to say that landlords are entitled to their rent increases. They certainly were entitled to the January rent and that pro rata apportionment of the February rent because they were accommodating the defendant and giving him time to clean out. So even if we take the defendant on face value, he says that, well, his security deposit should cover rent, he would still owe over a thousand in rent. And that's yeah. something I can't find a rationale to excuse him from. But as far as the damages are concerned, that's something else. I'm more than happy to listen to both of you with respect to that. I agree. As far as the damages are concerned, I mean, you have the plaintiffs who, you know, have some credibility issues in claiming that they've done things when they didn't. And as far as the flooring is concerned, I believe that the defendant, when he testified that this was normal wear and tear, I believe the defendant is, I guess, what I'm saying. Not that the plaintiffs intentionally tried to lie, but I think they over-exaggerated and maybe just left some things out, which was concerning. But I agree with you, Judge Corriero. I, I feel as though they are entitled to the prorated amount right. because he did overstay. Right. So he does owe close to $2,000 after taking into account his, his deposit. Look, the fact that they didn't appreciate how lucky they got as landlords it doesn't affect the fact that the defendant owes them the rent. Yeah. You know, the fact that a lot of folks fell on hard times doesn't change the fact that landlords still are entitled to be paid for rent. There was no rent moratorium. But it did affect the credibility. I mean, I think he was there for 10 years. And, you know, a couple of nicks on the floor after 10 years, I think, is the definition of wear and tear. OK, what about these bar stools, though? <laughs> I mean, I, well, what are you doing with these bar stools? <laughs> Why I mean, are you the bar... fixated well, on these bar it, stools? Listen, if there's, we spend there's... another minute on those bar stools, <laughs> Well, here's man. the thing. I, I, I'm not giving the plaintiffs credit for the smoke alarms, because there was no picture of any missing no. smoke well, alarms. Well, they, they do have... Provide. There is a picture of a missing smoke alarm. Well, the, I thought that there wasn't. I believe the defendants that he put the bar stools in the garage. Right, right, but they're not there. They're not there, and we saw the picture of the empty garage. So I think the bar stools were missing. I think he testified they didn't want them there. The loss there does fall to him. Right? There were 75 each? Yeah. And I, they're at least I, 10 years old. Right. I think we can give them maybe half the value of the bar stools for $75. what would, would have been very old bar stools. And the rest, I chalk up to normal wear and tear. So, so the total is 2013. That's what I have. Which is all of the back owed rent, the late fee, all the and back, yes. half of the value of the bar stools. Yes. I think that's fair. I think so too. We have a verdict. Yes, it's we unanimous. do. Unanimous. Excellent. Terrific.